Hi, my name is Dr. Alyssa Cohen with Public Floor for Moms, and I want to talk to you about what an initial evaluation might look like for pelvic floor conditions. I think pelvic floor PT can seem really scary to people, and so knowing what to expect that first day I think can help ease a little bit of tension and make it seem not so bad. So, first of all, um, we're, we're going to be doing an evaluation, which means that we're looking at the whole body. We're going to look at spine range of motion, hip range of motion. We're going to look at strength of your core and how you're engaging your core and hip strength and um, your standing posture and all these different things that might impact and affect pelvic floor. That being said, then we can also do an internal pelvic floor assessment. Internal pelvic floor assessment is not always necessary. Certainly if you do not feel comfortable with it, don't want to do it, don't have to do it. We can definitely draw a lot of conclusions from what we see from the outside and that sort of thing. So we can, we can get better without it. Um, but if you have any sort of symptoms at all, um, incontinence, urgency, prolapse, heaviness, pain, scar tissue, things like that, I think there's always a value add to doing an internal assessment. I feel like both me and the patient always learn something that's going to inform our care going forward. So, um, I think it's worthwhile. If you're completely asymptomatic and you don't want to do it, great, we don't have to do it. But even for asymptomatic people, sometimes it's still nice and you still learn like, oh, those are those muscles and that's what I'm supposed to do with them. So it can be helpful. So um, internal assessment, what it means. We have three layers of pelvic floor muscles. So more of these external muscles are our pinch, squeeze, hold the stream of, stream of urine sorts of muscles. Then we have this deep layer of muscles, this layer three. These are going to help support and stabilize the SI joint and our hips. They're going to help hold up our internal organs. They kind of act almost like a rudder to the, the sacrum. And so like you imagine if one side is tight, if this side's tight, it's going to like make that whole spine do wonky things. Um, so when we're assessing, we're using one finger vaginally to feel those muscles. So first we're going to start by palpating those muscles, finding and assessing for tight spots. Um, layer one, and then we're going to go deeper into layer two and three here. If I, if I find tight spots, I'm holding my finger there, holding some pressure until that muscle releases a little bit. So kind of like trigger point release. We want it to be comfortable and not painful. So if you are having pain in that region in general, we want to keep pain at a three out of 10 or lower. So it should not be like horribly uncomfortable or anything like that. Um, Yes, yeah, so we're going to loosen those muscles and then we want to check about um, how, what your strength and coordination looks like. So we'll have you do a few kegels and I'll talk to you about breath and how to contract those muscles. If it's not going super well, then I'm going to cue you. I'm going to ask you to, you know, can you do it this way? Can we do it better? Can we get more strength and range of motion out of those muscles? So um, we can check that. We can check for prolapse, so having people bear down and feel um, how much excursion we're getting out of those tissues to see what might be impacting that heaviness sort of feeling. So that's what we're looking for with internal assessment. Again, it feels always beneficial and useful for people, I think, because we always learn something. Um, and then, you know, we might do some manual therapy on the outside stuff too, right? So if you're experiencing SI joint pain, we might work through the SI joint either manually with hands and fingers and elbows and things like that. We might do some dry needling. Um, cupping can be useful to just get more fascial mobility, that sort of thing. So we can do some of those things either first day or in follow-up visits. Um, and then I'm going to give you homework. So my perspective is we always want mobility before stability. So if you have a lot of tension going on, I'm probably going to give you some mobility homework to begin with. So whether it's stretching or just doing the, some diaphragmatic breathing or getting on the lacrosse ball and working along the SI joint or your low back or things like that, mobility homework to begin with. Um, and then often we need to either progress into doing some strengthening or I might give you some strengthening homework that first day. Um, but we will get to strengthening homework eventually, likely. Um, I always try to keep it super manageable. I recognize that you're a mom, I'm a mom. We don't have a lot of time to do a ton of stuff. So either giving you stuff that you can incorporate into that, into your day-to-day -day routine or keeping the routine super short and simple, hopefully like 10 to 15 minutes once a day, ideally. So hopefully that helps answer some questions. If you have other questions, let me know in the comments and um, I'd be happy to answer those.